Longtime actress Susan Sarandon has spent her years living in a few notable properties. While she spent 30 years of her life living in a multi level Manhattan duplex, she bought herself a $2 million apartment in the Greenwich Village area and more recently has a custom built mansion in Vermont still in progress. Also, Michael and I just dropped our very own house tour of our new home when we moved in this year. So if you'd like to see that, go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel and you can see where we're living and more of what we're up to. Oh, and once you watch, let me know what you think of our home. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Susan Sarandon has not only been nominated for numerous accolades throughout her remarkable acting career, she's also got on to win 58 awards for her work, including the Oscar for Best Actress in Dead Man Walking. Her co-star in that film, Sean Penn, would be one of her many high-profile relationships over the years. But Susan had also dated the likes of David Bowie and Tim Robbins, the latter of who she stayed with for nearly 20 years while they raised their two children. It was during this time with Tim that Susan began to put together a pretty impressive real estate profile. Back in 1991, these two threw in together for a multi-level duplex in the heart of New York City. But after her relationship with Tim came to an end, Susan began looking around for something to call her own, which came in the form of a small but expensive apartment also in Manhattan. She'd go back and forth between the two properties over the next decade before finally selling her original duplex and ordering a custom mansion for herself in the state of Vermont. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment and this one looking at the homes of Susan Sarandon. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit me up on Instagram to chat and now let's get into this video. Located in the luxury boutique co-op known as La Fabrique, this pre-war industrial building was built in New York City's Chelsea neighborhood in 1923 and then converted into residential living spaces sometime in the 1980s. Only a few years later, Susan Sarandon and her then partner Tim Robbins would team up to take ownership of a six bedroom, two level home with an epic 6,000 square feet of living space. Prior to their arrival in 1991, this space was actually made up of two separate units sprawling across two floors, the sixth and seventh levels of the building, which Susan and Tim combined together with a stunning curved staircase. Guests stepping out of the key accessed elevator will discover a home with a colossal amount of living space. Not only are there half a dozen bedrooms in this place, but there's even a corner library, an open concept chef's kitchen, and a humongous living room that was at one time used by Susan's children to perform at-home plays and dance recitals when they were much, much younger. Large picture windows in that very same living room offer a plenty of light, as well as unobstructed views of the World Trade Center and the Empire State Building. In fact, a few years ago, Susan reflected on watching the towers fall from these very windows, telling the Wall Street Journal, we saw the towers fall on 9-11 and we saw the sun rise again the next day. As for Susan's spacious master suite here, it boasts its own dressing room, a massive 43 foot long balcony, and an ensuite bathroom with further windows and a large soaking tub. There's also a home corner office that features custom built in shelving and a comfy reading nook with views of Union Square. Other notable amenities include a wood burning fireplace in the den, a private gallery in the front foyer, a sunken media lounge, and most of all, an extremely blue bathroom, which Susan often refers to as the Academy of awards bath. If you can't guess by its name, this is the exact room where Susan keeps her many awards and trophies, including the Oscar she won for Best Actress. When speaking with the Wall Street Journal about this room in particular, she told them, I thought it was kind of funny to keep them in the bathroom. When people come out of the bathroom, I expect them to be laughing, but they don't say a thing. Maybe they think I'm taking it seriously. As an avid entertainer and a host, Susan would often hold large parties in the dining area and kitchen of her home, while 
while reserving the entire second floor of the duplex with its three bedrooms, a couple of bathrooms, a second kitchen, den, and a cute terrace for any visiting guests. In other words, when company came to visit, they could stay at Susan's for as long as they felt like. But all that square footage came with something of a downside too. After raising her three children in this home, all of whom are now well into their 30s, Susan was left with an empty nest. And for the most part, it was just way too much space for her to live in alone. So in 2020, she finally listed the home and sold it for just under $8 million. While it's unclear how much she and Tim originally spent on the duplex, when she and her ex split, Susan spent $3.2 million buying Tim out of his half of the property in 2010. As for where Susan headed next, well, let's just say it was definitely smaller. At the same time as she was buying Tim out of his half of their duplex, Susan also splurged on a tiny one bedroom apartment in a swanky section of Greenwich Village known as the Gold Coast. According to city records, Susan paid around $1.75 million for her new bachelorette pad located on West 9th Street. Susan bought the property from high end wallpaper designer Anya Larkin and inherited a well skilled but far from large one bedroom and one bath penthouse with some eye popping city views and a wraparound terrace. Don't believe that a star as big as Susan Sarandon lives in an apartment that's less than a thousand square feet in space? Well, I know it's hard to wrap your head around, but considering the cost of New York City living, it really is not all that surprising. In fact, according to photos from the former listing, the front door of Susan's home opens directly into her 400 square foot main living space. This area of the home is divided into separate living and dining areas, with the living room boasting some built-in cabinets that anchor one side of Susan's classic looking fireplace. On the other side of the room, in the tile floor dining area, which includes French doors that connect to the exterior terrace that wraps around three sides of the apartment. The dining area is attached to the chef inspired kitchen that's been outfitted with some commercial grade stainless steel appliances. And a highlight of this room is definitely the pretty city views that Susan can look at while washing dishes. There's also a small vestibule located just off the living room that leads back to the generously sized and only bedroom in the place. One that includes another set of French doors leading out to the east side of the terrace. Meanwhile, the ensuite bathroom includes a double windowed bathroom that's been redone in a classic 1930s style with white subway tiles on the walls, as well as black and white honeycomb tiles on the floor. It's unclear how often Susan spends time here, but considering she decided to move on from her Chelsea duplex because of its massive size, it's safe to bet that she finds the intimate setting of this apartment to be more to her liking, at least at this stage of her life. But that being said, Susan isn't gonna stay here forever. And apparently, she plans on moving to the state of Vermont sometime in the very near future. According to sources, Susan is building a new mansion for herself in Stamford, Vermont. Located just across the border from Massachusetts in Bennington County, an area of Vermont with just over 800 residents, construction on this new home was underway as of October 2021, with engineering, surveying, and architectural work being handled by a nearby construction company known as Guntlow & Associates. Susan's new home sits high on top of a hill more than 2,000 feet above the sea level. 47-acre property on which the house is being built was purchased in June 2018 for $297,000. Over the past few years, Susan has been known to spend more and more time in Vermont as she has become active in the state's political circles as an avid supporter of Senator Bernie Sanders. And while her house is not quite ready to be lived in, when it's completed, the structure will boast a great room, three bedrooms, and even its own tower according to designs on file. As of right now, a portion of this new home can be seen from the end of its long driveway over on Country Road, and considering how long it's been under construction, I wouldn't be surprised if Susan is moving into this place by the end of the summer. But as of right now, that's all we know. On paper, it sure looks like this place is far more suitable a home for someone with Susan's pedigree, but perhaps Perhaps she's having a hard time quitting her longtime home of New York City. After all, when she moved out of her Chelsea apartment, she was quoted as telling the journal, I've always been a New Yorker and I'll continue to be a New Yorker. Which means my best guess is that even when Susan does finally move into her new place in Vermont, she is going to keep that tiny Greenwich Village apartment all to herself, just in case she ever gets the itch to spend a night in the Big Apple. Well, that concludes our Susan Sarandon house tour. After checking out her home, past and present, what did you think? Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the
the comment section below. As usual, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.